Hi YouTube, Watch Fire with another video. Uh, a while back I did a video on a watch mod uh, that didn't go so well for me. I was trying to replace the movement on my Seiko 5 SRP E55 because it had gone bad and it was running really uh, inaccurately. So I'd gotten an NH36 but the stem broke off. Long story short, I had to use a 7S36 movement that I had on hand. And it turned out good, and that's that's a fine movement. It just doesn't hack or hand wind. So um, just going back here and um, swapping out that 7S36 movement with another NH36 movement so I can get back the hacking and hand winding features. So I removed the case back on the watch, and there's a little area that you press down on. That'll let you remove the stem and crown. Obviously we need to take that out before we can get the old movement out of the case. Sometimes it just falls out, but in this case, I'm just gonna need to um, use the spring bar removal tool to basically pry it, gently pry up a little bit. And that'll allow me to, uh, that'll allow the movement to fall out. So once the movement's out, basically set the case off to the side because I don't want it to pick up dust on the underneath underside of the crystal. So what I'm going to do here is put a piece of plastic on the dial. And this is a hands removal tool that I got a while back from, I think I got it from Amazon. It doesn't cost that much. Sorry there's not a good view of this, but Basically with the tool, you just need to position it so that it's underneath all three hands. And then once it is, you just squeeze on it and it does something where it presses up on the center and that's how the hands come out. So now that the hands are off, I basically put those to the side and now I just need to separate the dial from the old movement. There's two, if you look on the side, there's two little notches. And if you stick a, a tool like this spring bar removal tool in there, you'll be able to, what I do is I twist on it and it kind of lifts the dial from the movement holder. So I do that on the other side too. I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want to scratch the dial or damage it. So now that that's off, that's the underside. That's what it looks like. There's actually two metal posts there. I don't know if you saw it. But uh, that's how the the dial uh, attaches to the movement. So this is a new movement, NH36, also with uh, Kanji Day Wheel. And I got it from a seller on eBay. I've purchased several movements from that seller and I haven't had any issues at all. The seller is local to me and um, the movements get, get to me pretty quick. So that's, that's pretty good. So now I just need to basically put the, the, this part isn't hard at all, just line up those metal posts that I mentioned with, uh, there's two holes on the plastic movement. I don't know if it's a movement holder or um, the, um, I don't know what the technical term for it is, but that gray plastic part, there's two holes. Just make sure that those posts go in there and that it's seated firmly or all the way down. So in order to prepare for um, applying the hands, well actually the hour and the minute hand, it's important that you get the movement to where it, it does 
it, it, the date change basically because that'll tell you that that's 12 o'clock so the date just changed there so now I know that I can put put the hour hand on on the post and it just needs to line up with the 12 o'clock indice So the tool I'm using here, again, I, I got it a while back from Amazon. It's just a, a hands tool um, or a tool to apply hands. And you just got to get it onto the post. The hour hand is the easiest one because it's, you know, it's the biggest one. Get it on the post and then just nudge it a little bit to align it with, you know, as good as you can with that 12 o'clock indice. Once you're satisfied with the alignment, I just press down firmly with the tool and that's going to seat the hour hand onto the, the post. Once that's on and you're satisfied with that, just do the same thing for the minutes hand, basically. It's got to also line up at 12. Oh, one thing you might want to do, though, is um, after you apply each hand, you might want to check, uh, turn, turn the movement so you can make sure that the clearance is fine. Take a look at it, make sure it's level. Sometimes it doesn't get uh, seated properly even though you, you know, it looks like it is. And you can tell it's not because if you turn the, the hands, you'll see that the, the hands kind of start spinning. So that means they're not seated properly. So yeah, I'm just doing the same thing for the minutes hand. I'm just getting it on the post. And I'm just gonna you can use whatever you want. I think I tried using Rodigo and then I switched to the the hands uh, tool. But anyway, just line it up as good as you can with the 12 o'clock indice. Once you're satisfied with the alignment, just press down firmly, just like you did with the hours, hour hand. It's kind of tricky in, in a way in that you, if you don't press down hard enough, it's, like I said, not going to seat properly. But if you do it too hard, you could damage the hands, bend them. And once they're bent, it's it's kind of hard to get them back into shape. Just want to check the clearance once you have. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a problem there. <laughs> uh, once the uh, hands are on, you want to check the clearance. Not only with the hour hands, making sure that they clear all the dial indices but you know also the minute hand that it's clearing the hour hand and they're not conflicting with each other so for the uh, seconds hand that's the trickiest for me that's the trickiest one to apply i use a trick here where i put a little bit of radical on the tip of the tool and that just kind of keeps it stable while i basically i'm looking at it from um, through a magnifying glass and I'm trying to get that tiny little post that's on the seconds hand. I'm trying to get that exactly on top of the tiny little um, seconds hand post on the movement. So you can get it on there just with some gentle pressure. And 
so yeah, I, I haven't pressed down firmly yet. But once you get it on there, then it's easy to just press down firmly. And again, you don't want to press too hard because especially the with the seconds hand, it's, since it's so thin, it's easy to, to bend it. So that's what I'm doing right here is I'm, I'm just double checking, pressing down firmly. I've had uh, times before where I thought the seconds hand was seated properly and then it turned out it wasn't. Uh, I put the movement into the case and then the seconds hand comes loose and I had to redo everything. So if you got the hands back on, basically that's the that's the hardest part of this this whole thing. The rest is just um, just cosmetic work, and you know I use a little bit of Rodico on the dial. I had noticed that the indices, uh, the polished areas of the indices were a little um, smudged, I guess because when I worked on this movement previously. So I'm just going over each one with the Rodico, just lightly. And that does a pretty good job of taking, taking off those smudges. And I use it, I use the Rodico also on the hands and then I use it on the dial wherever I see a speck of dust. The Rodico is good to clean that up for you. I'm going to speed up this part because it's kind of boring, but uh, you get the idea. With the uh, Rodico, you can, you know, it's really helpful to do touch up work on the dial hands and indices and you want to do this before obviously you put it uh, back into the case and then you notice it later and then you end up getting frustrated because you got to take the movement back out so basically uh, I need to just same thing as before I need to remove the stem and crown so I can um, get the movement back into the watch case. It's pressing down on that same small lever. And once that's out, I just put it to the side. Double check the dial, and I'm even using the puffer here. I use it on the, the dial and um, also the, the inside of the watch case. So putting the movement back into the case is usually not a big deal. You just got to make sure that you, on the movement, the hole where the stem goes in, it's got to line up with the, um, with the watch case where that stem, where you insert the stem into the case. So if you align those two things, then you'll be able to press down. Sometimes it's a tight fit, like on this one, it's kind of tight. So what I have to do is I just kind of firmly press down on that plastic uh, movement holder. And I just go around the movement and try to do it evenly. And just to make sure that the movement's fully seated into the case. Once it's in there, then obviously you got to check for alignment. And usually it doesn't, it's not aligned first thing. So you just got to take a look, see how things are lining up. Look at the 12 o'clock indice and uh, on the dial, see how it lines up with the 
indices on the chapter ring. And if you look at 12 and 6, um, usually when there's an alignment issue, both of them are, are misaligned. So in order to get into alignment, I, I just kind of look at the front of the dial and I kind of see, okay, well, what direction does it need to go to be better aligned? So if, if you're looking at the watch and it needs to go clockwise to get better aligned, then when you turn it over, you can actually nudge the movement in the opposite direction, so counterclockwise, and then that will improve the alignment. It's just trial and error, just keep checking. So put the stem back in and just check in the movement here. Checking the hands that they are clearing each other, not getting caught up on anything. Also checking that the um, date turns over, which I already did, but just being paranoid, I guess. So now I'm just checking since it's a new movement and it wasn't advertised as being uh, regulated. I'm just checking to see what the accuracy rate is on this new movement. Again, it's an NH36, which is a, basically it's the same as a Seiko 4R36. And uh, the 4R36 is what originally came with this watch, and that's the movement that went bad on me. I'm not looking for perfection here. Um, I'd say if it was off by a lot, I would, uh, I'd use this time here to regulate it. But it turns out it's actually not bad. There's zero millisecond beat error and um, anything below 10 seconds I'm fine with. So I put the case, um, I screwed down the case back, not, not all the way, but just enough so that I can take a measurement with the dial up. And just looking to make sure things are consistent here with the previous reading. So still uh, no beat error. And looks like 10 or, or less seconds fast, which is actually, I'd rather have it a little fast than slow. So I'm fine. I'm, I'm not even going to regulate this movement because I hear also that a, with a new movement, it the accuracy rate is going to change as the movement breaks in. So I'm just going to leave it like this and then wear it for a while, maybe you know a month or so, and just to just check on it from time to time to see what the accuracy rate is and I'll regulate it if need be later. But for now I'm actually I think I got pretty lucky with this movement. I've had movements where I yeah I definitely I definitely had to um, regulate it. At this point I'm just putting on the the putting the bracelet back on. I already fully screwed down the case back. And that's pretty much it. In terms of how long this takes for me, um, I want to say it took an hour. I, I think it took that long because I was trying to film it. <laughs> but um, maybe it would have gone quicker had I not. Anyway, just double checking, make sure there's no um, specks of dust or anything under the dial or under the crystal, which uh, I didn't see any. 
the rotors moving freely. So yeah, now I'm, now I'm happy with this watch again. I, I've got the, for me, the hacking <clears throat> and the hand winding is a big deal. So wanted to thank you for watching, of course, and uh, hopefully this was interesting to you, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.